sandals are a little like blue jeans. Like what fits my butt isn't what fits your butt. And try different ones and figure out what you love, what feels good to you, and have a variety of different instruments so that you can help prevent some of those muscular skeletal disorders. So often we're, I, we're like, well, I don't do this because. And you can feel that because with a number of different things. Until you get to a situation, pain is a powerful motivator for change. And when you are in a chair for eight to 10 hours and you find that your body is not cooperating, you've got to make some changes. And often those changes are an investment in self. And while that might be a number of physical things, please think about it being your equipment. If I ever hear like, I learned this in school 30 years ago and I'm still doing it. It's like, there's so many better ways now. Let's switch it up and you know, let, let your body be happy with what's going on. Let's not keep doing the same thing. Yeah, this is a tale, a tale, oh yeah. A tale of two hygienists. So there might be only one, bringing the best of dental knowledge. And we do it all with ease. We cover oral health and screening and preventing gum disease. We're gonna do a lot of learning and have a little bit of fun working at the dentist. Tale of Two Hygienists. Hello, and welcome to another episode of A Tale of Two Hygienists podcast, episode number 352. I'm your host, Andrew Johnston, and thank you so much for making us a part of your day. So we have a great episode today. I, all of them are great, I know. Um, and I love these collaboration type shows that we have because you have lots of voices, lots of opinions. It's not just you know one person's opinion. And so today we're talking about instrumentation, which I think has been a little bit of a hot topic lately um, as it kind of has made that kind of cyclical appearance on all of the conference course booklets. So we brought some favorites of the show, Amanda Hill, Jessica Atkinson, and Malia Lewis. Those last two, you know, from Hygiene Edge. And of course, Amanda's been on the show multiple times. Uh, so I think you're going to love this one. And then next week we have another one that I think was really awesome. You know, for me, it's sometimes these podcasts end up being like a personal journey or a personal opportunity for me to get to know somebody. And so we have Alyssa Aberly on. I've seen her at conferences. I've seen some of the work that she's done. Um, I've always respected her because she has a voice. She has an opinion on so many different topics, but I never really had a chance to speak with her very much. So I took the opportunity to have her on the show mostly so I could get to know who she is. And I think that you're going to love that one. So make sure that you are hitting that subscribe button so you don't miss that. And then this weekend, I will be in St. Louis for the Perio Protect Conference. So if you are going and we haven't met yet, please come say hi. I mean, if we have met before, please come say hi anyway. But especially if I don't know who you are, um, let's at least get a picture together or something. And then next week is the ADA meeting, SmileCon in Houston. And I'll be there late Thursday for all of Friday. So come say hi there if you're planning on being there. Erica Flateau, who you've heard on several of the episodes as a guest co-host, and I think you'll hear on a few more episodes that we recorded at RDH Under One Roof, she's also going to be there with me doing some more co-hosting. So if you'd like to get to know her better, please come find us on Friday for sure. And I think that's it for me for this week. Short and sweet this time, so you can spend more of your time listening to Amanda, Jessica, and Malia. A tale of two hygienists. Hey friends, quick pause in the show to remind you about the CE offered for several of our episodes. All you have to do is click into the show notes and follow the link to the CE Zoom website. Answer a few of those questions about the episode correctly and you'll be rewarded the appropriate amount of CEUs. This wouldn't be possible without a partnership with our friends at Tempstars. Tempstars is more than just a temp and a placement service. They are clinician led and education focused and strive to perfectly match individuals and dental offices. Learn more about tempstars.com or go back and listen to some of their tip episodes. They are absolutely worth the listen. And now back to the show. Hello, everybody. Mm -hmm. My name is Amanda Hill and I am uh, a dental hygienist. I'm currently the clinical education manager at Young Innovations. I am a former... Hold on. <gasps> oh, you know what? Dang it. I don't think that's going to actually come in. Oh, bummer. I can hear oh. clapping. Anyway, I had a clapping sound effect. I'm sorry. That's I, like heard it. I heard it. I heard it. I felt very it. excited. There's, there's an auditorium applause. I love it. So I love job. it. It was. I, I feel pumped Congrats now. Congrats for that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. It's a good gig. I'm mm -hmm. having a lot of fun. You're doing great at it. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, you know, that's a tiny bit about me. How about you? 
My name is Jessica Atkinson. I'm also a registered <gasps> dental hygienist. <You> <laughs> yes, Get I am. I know. I know. God. It's really popular lately. It is. Everyone's doing it. <laughs> I'm currently the senior clinic coordinator. I know I'm starting new this fall. This is exciting. This is that is a promotion? E- e- yeah. Or just different responsibilities? E- yeah. It sounds like a promotion. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It, it, um, there are some promotional aspects. Okay. <laughs> Definitely some promotional aspects. Okay. okay. But I currently teach at Utah Tech University in Southern Utah. <laughs> oh. the love, applause love the applause. <laughs> love the applause. And I am the COO of Hygiene Edge, where I work with Me. my best friends, <laughs> Malia being one. I'm Malia Lewis. I'm a dental hygienist, too. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, yes. so many oh, hygienists. This. <laughs> this is a tale of four hygienists. I love it. Well, and we're, we're out of Utah. We run Hygiene Edge, which is an education platform that we love to teach helpful tips and tricks to hygienists. And it's been a lot of fun and super rewarding. So I'm excited to talk about some more today on this podcast uh, with you, you know, guys. Before we get into like what you guys have, Hygiene Edge is, by the way, one of the most useful resources, I think, not even just for mm. myself, but I think for the everyday clinician. Everyone. We have in like, so we have our onboarding that we do with our, our hygienists that, you know, we oh, work, yeah. I work at DSO, we have 50 offices and we bring in people and we say, hey, these are the things that you need to do. But then there will be things that they should already know how to do, Yeah. but they might not, yeah. like, and I can't be there, I'm you know, 300 miles away or whatever. I'm like, hey, watch this video from Hygiene mm-hmm. Edge. Here, watch so this. Nice. So, yeah. <laughs> I, and, you know, and I've seen in people's presentations, I've seen them reference We've had you guys that too. It's lot. so weird. I mean, We're like sitting and then like our video shows up. We're like, what the? I, like, I hey, reference you guys weird. all <laughs> the time. Yeah. You guys are That's huge. So, so nice. Thank Thanks. you so much for Yeah, the, there was the definitely a need because we saw in private practice and with our students, like you graduate and then you kind of in your own world, you kind of like just start doing your own thing and then, mm-hmm. There wasn't a lot of resources, so we just wanted right. to help elevate our profession and be like something you can easily watch and be a little bit better and answer and your questions. Not and feel dumb if you forgot yeah. something. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, you graduated dental hygiene school competent. You're not going to kill anybody out there. And there's a lot of room for growth. There's yeah. so much room to learn. Yeah. I so. like to say you, you graduated knowing standard of care, and now it's time to go to elevation of care. And Ooh. Hygiene Edge can really help you go to that elevation of care. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. I think you guys are also like a little bit on the forefront of the, the shorter video, right? Oh. The, that format where it's, it's super huge. popular now. Yeah. But I've you guys were doing that before it was popular. Because we worked with students. Yeah. And you're like, give them something five minutes to read or watch. Like, nah, no, yeah, 30 <laughs> seconds. <laughs> all you yeah. Guys yeah. Get. No. I don't have time for that. Yeah. No, it's, yeah. it's 30 seconds max to get through, which I mean, we're all like that now. I feel like our attention mm-hmm. sense are super short. So yeah, maybe it's a good thing, bad thing. I don't know, but that's the way of the world. Yeah. So <laughs> all right. Should we get in our top five? Yeah. Yeah. So we are going to talk about the top five instrumentation tips today with Hygiene Edge. Woo-hoo. Woo. And, and I got to tell you, this is interesting. When I took this role that I have now at Young as the clinical education manager, the one thing that I was the no- most nervous about was instrumentation. Oh, yeah. And part of that was because I know what I know, and I know that there's a lot I don't know. And yes, and it's hygiene a whole new world was sometimes. really able yeah. to help me. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, thanks. yeah. So the number one thing that I would say about instrumentation is get out of your comfort zone. Because I, as a typical clinician, had like a top five instruments. Oh, it yeah. was the ones I learned in school. Right. It was Montana the brand Jack. I had in school. Montana mm-hmm. Jack. Right. That was all I knew. Hold on. Did you have Montana Jack in school? You had I a, did. You did. We didn't have it in See, school. See, and that's what's crazy is everybody s- got a different set in school. So yeah. if I graduated in Utah and you graduated in Oregon. Yeah. We Washington. Have, but yeah. Ah, similar. Don't, don't demean. <laughs> I mean. Sorry, Oregon. Just kidding. <laughs> <What>? Okay. <laughs> if you, but you, if like 10 minutes away from mm-hmm. whatever. No. It's fine. No. It's fine. He's Let's like, he's like up by it's the fine. border. It's fine. We'll, we'll move on. Listen, my <laughs> geography is not excellent. So I think you start with such different basic sets. Mm-hmm. Yes. And it is predicted by the faculty. We get together every year and we're like, what do we want in our cassettes for our students to use? And what's in the textbook? I think that's yeah. a big one. It's like, this is in the textbook. They can read it. We're going to pick this one. That doesn't mean it's the best. It's it just there. It's and it's easier. Also, you also get you know, favorites of your instructor. They yeah. may, they may really love something and that's what you have in your kit. And you're like, I don't know what this is. Right. Or, you know, what your rep sells you. Right. And so, Cost. you know, if you guys don't, you know, if you guys don't know, there are different handles out there that way different, uh, you know, 
have different weights, have different knurling, have different feels. And I feel I've never like even heard the word knurling. Knurling, knurling. knurling is the bumpiness mm-hmm. that that as like you the roll texture. an instrument in Got your it. hand, it kind of has Got that bumpiness. It. If it's too smooth, it's going to fall out of your hand. And so, but I feel like handles are a little like blue jeans. Like what fits my butt isn't what fits your butt. And, Unfortunately, and mm-hmm. and and try, <laughs> and try different ones and figure out what what you love, what feels good to you, and have a variety of different instruments. You know, so that y- you can help, you know, prevent some of those muscular skeletal disorders. Yeah. And things are being invented, right? Each year they're coming mm-hmm. out with a little different design, different shapes, and they, they're they better. But if we don't try them, we have no idea. So right. if I stuck with the same it. ones from the 90s, right. you know, when I was in hygiene school. And then the one point I want to make is universals are not <laughs> universal. <laughs> <laughs> I, I cringe when I hear, I can clean a whole mouth with a Barnhart. 204S, man. 204S. <laughs> whatever. Insert whatever instrument. Like, I can do the whole mouth. You give me Montana Jack, got the whole mouth. Yeah. I mean, you could. <laughs> it might not be the best, but yeah, you could. That's kind of the point is that, yeah, maybe you can be real crafty. However, there are limitations to your instrument mm-hmm. instruments. Like, totally. Yeah. Don't ask a Barnhart to do what a sickle can do. Or what a mini needs to do, a mini blade. You know, they have blades that are 50% shorter, and so you can get into furcations, or you can get into that, you know, two, 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 eight, two. You're like, wait, hang on, where did that eight come from? Like, yeah. But and you're not going to get in I'm there. Like root fracture, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Most likely. Yeah, <laughs> and extended shanks and things yeah. like that that you really need to have in your armamentarium to be able to grab because that universal is not going to get you all the places you need to go. Yeah, I think about it with like a dental dentist with like an extraction. Like, they don't have one. Um, ex- elevator, elevator, yeah. or one, yeah, one set of pliers. Pliers, yeah. they have multiple for different areas, different teeth. If something breaks, you grab the other one. There's mm-hmm. lots of different options. You know, you have backup plans if something goes wrong. We kind of need to have that too as hygienists. It's not just one size fits all because no tooth is one size fits all. Unfortunately, it would be easier. It would, it would be. be a way easier. Way easier. <laughs> um, all right, number two, keep your instruments working for you, Ooh. not against you. Yeah. They're made, they're made with a lot of science and a lot of research and a lot of studying. And when you use them in the right areas, the correct way, they're there to help you and you'll love them. And do you know that <laughs> instruments don't last forever? <laughs> Let's tell some people. Can, can I ask this? Yep. What, in, in the educational setting, because it's been too long, I forgot. What do you tell the students like this is the expectation for lifespan of an instrument? I don't know if I've ever said this is the lifespan of your instrument. I think that the approach for me is, is your instrument still performing in the way it was born to perform? But that's the thing. I think we forget. So it's like, it's like when I just had my kitchen knives sharpened. Okay. And so, you know, the guy in my neighborhood sharpens the knives and all of a sudden, like I go to cut the tomato. Your neighbor sharpens your knives. He does. He's so awesome. (laughs) I need that neighbor. (laughs) What is that? And all of a sudden you go to cut your tomato and it cuts like butter and you like, Oh, that's how my knife is supposed to work. Right. I Forget. forgot. Yeah. <laughs> and right. so when you when you have these instruments that really a lifespan of an instrument, folks, is like six to eighteen months, depending on it's your ro- your rotation, all that stuff. How Not often? six to eighteen years, dear doctor. <laughs> um, dear hygienist. Yeah. Please, come don't on. Tell yes. The I know. <laughs> dear all of us. Dear well, all of and us. The reason why I asked about the the student part though is like yeah, in the the lifespan span of our our little educational career, we're not really wearing through them enough no. for them to because no. you saw two patients a day and for, I remember, yeah. Yeah. I remember right. being a student not. being like, oh my gosh, I worked so hard today. I saw two patients. <laughs> <Not> two <laughs> whole patients. And I feel like at least when I assume this is where you guys do too is like there's regular sharpening happening. Your your instructors okay. are helping you be like. Hey, is this sharp enough? When was the last time you sharpened? There? There's that reminder all right. the time. The last time yeah. there was regular sharpening in my life was in school. I right. I mean, but, I think for to, to be honest, a lot of people. And yeah. and for me, I I've worked in a number of different offices, and all of them part time. So I worked at one office two days a week, one office one day a week, taught at a school one day a week. So mm-hmm. I would go to work, and I would have my instruments i don't know when the last time they were sharpened Mm -hmm. and depending on the day do i have any time to sharpen those and then there's a number of different suggestions on when you should sharpen chair side or should you you autoclave them before or after Mm -hmm. there's so many different things and so to be honest i fell in the category of i'll make do absolutely that's what we do and when we make do what do we what happens you squash the tomato 
Amanda. Yeah. You squash, squash the tomato. That and, and, and you hurt and yourself. And that tomato, <laughs> that tomato is the patient, and that tomato is you. I know. As a clinician. I mean, it's it's bad ergonomically for us when we're using dull instruments. It's it not takes so much care longer. for our patients. Yeah. It takes so much longer. It's not effective. Yeah. Well, what I actually did is yeah. I just went to Sharpen Free. <laughs> and <laughs> going to Sharpen Free <laughs> is the way to go. Because, I, you know what? I'm not good at sharpening instruments. Yeah. Actually, you know what I'm good at? I can turn a curette into a sickle like nobody's <laughs> business. And Thanks it is people. the <laughs> highest concern for students is, am I doing this right? Am right. I they get nervous that they're going to wreck it. Yeah. yeah. And sometimes they do wreck it. Sometimes yeah. I look at these instruments and go, what was this? Like, oh, you have made your own. Mm-hmm. I've, I've got to look at the handle yeah. to see what this, what this was born to be because this is not what this is. Yeah. So yeah, sharp and free. So Super sharp and free. Good. And I mean, I, I've had access to sharp and free for only a, a sh- short time so prior to that sharpening was sporadic and stressful because mm-hmm. I worked in an office with a number of different hygienists and I sharpened the way that I wanted to sharpen and I gratefully for my career I've been in a school pretty consistently since I graduated sure I started adjunct about a year after I graduated and so I've really had a refresher every single year on nice. how to sharpen but no, not everybody has that access no. and i recognize that and i also was like oh i know who sharpened these instruments and this is going to be a rough day sorry that was me <laughs> <laughs> well i mean and that's that's so true I, you know we practice like hey you have your instruments you have your instruments we try and separate them as much as we can just kind of you know separate that to help that, that. Issue. Mm-hmm. going back to the sharpen freaks i know we're moving on to number three yeah. here in a minute but I think it's been pretty clear in my, my life that I try and keep things as simple as possible. I hate sharpening. And so I would end up buying my own sharpen free ones for years. Yeah. I did that because yeah. I, I feel the same way as you. I, I, I have the way to go. I have like a little stash of my own that yes. no one can touch. Cause yes. I'm like, mine. Just, mine, these mine. Are mine. Yeah. Mine. I brought them myself and I like them sharp in this way. And yeah. And I want to yeah. talk about something that Malia and Andrew just said. It's investing in your own self you have to. so often we're, I, we're like well I don't do this because and you can feel that because with a number of different things until you get to a situation pain is a powerful motivator for change <laughs> and when you are in a chair for eight to ten hours and you find that your body is not cooperating you've got to make some changes and often those changes are an investment in self and mm-hmm. while that might be a number of physical things, please think about it being your equipment. Because you matter. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, that rolls well into number three. So number three is advocate for your needs, but think like a business owner. And, and I have to say, as a clinician, like I became a hygienist because I didn't want to run a business. And, and I right. felt really strongly about that. And I almost, you know, and I, in my heart of hearts, in my perfect, happy world, like I should get everything that I want and need and it should just show up. And Every time I need it. It's my, right. per, it's my doctor's responsibility. It's his job. However, dot, 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 all of this being said, there are a couple ways to go about this. And, and really thinking about when we're replacing instruments, because, again, they have to be replaced, doing it, you know, it, depending on how your office works, should you replace two or three a month? You know, depending on how many cassettes you have. And then, and that way, you're not saying once a year, you're like, I need eight cassettes worth of instruments. And your doc's like, whoa. Right. Yeah. And so get a little smarter about rotating out those instruments. I use that 204S the most. I mean, right. I use that blackjack the most. Those are the two that need to be replaced the most. Like, and so you really start to get into a rotation. Um, have a plan of and what's going to happen. Yeah. So, that, so that you're not saying, I need eight cassettes worth of instruments at once. Right. Because that's not feasible, especially in today's world. It's <laughs> yeah. not. So um, the hard part about that, yeah. the, the listeners like identifying this. I can already I, tell. I love it. I love it. Okay. I have... Six 204 S's. I'm rotating two at a time. How do I know which two? You know oh. what I mean? How about, how about banding? Got a band. So band, here's, baby, here's, band. Bring here's the Here's a band suggestion in. for that. A band, sure. Or do all of your 204 S's in at January. That's good. And then again in here. And then do your next, you know, 13, like 14 it. here, here. Yeah. Or one kit at a time. Like yeah. complete Love kits that. at yep. a time. So what, what I had to do, and it was like, because the manufacturer stamps, like, hey, this is when it was manufactured. It has a born on Yes, date. you can ha- technically have banding, but how many bands are we going to have in our, come on. You know, I have a band for it. every single hygienist. They have their colors. And then we have a band for when we have replaced them. And then we have a band for oh, the, uh, that's, it that's gets that's way too that's many bands. Band. Yeah, it's like four <laughs> little rings on the, the hand. They're like, anymore. where do I hold? <laughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly. It's exactly. all bands. So it, gets, so it can get, yeah. like, really, really busy. But there's a way to do it, everyone. It's just, I'm just saying, like, just be smart and methodical about it. 
and then pitch it to that way to the whoever's making the decisions in the practice. Yeah. Yeah. And, and they'll they'll get it. They'll love it. And be responsible. Like maybe you yes. say, I will be responsible for monitoring my own instruments. Yes. So advocate for your needs, my friends. Speaking about advocating for needs, we were talking about maybe a cassette at a time or these certain instruments at a time. Advocate for your needs that you need a different set for different patients. I Back to, I can do a whole mouth with a Montana Jack. Like, yeah. we've got to remember to give our patients not just standard of care, but excellence of excellence care. Excellence of care. That we need to be using different instruments for different procedures, different presentations of people. And so to advocate for your needs, say, hey, I need maybe a this type of instrument for the linguals of the, you know, the mandibular anterior linguals when I have a freaking bar. Bogey right. 513, I need so a bogey right. 513. I need a bogey 513 that's for that. That's what you need. That's what you and, need. And, if, and listeners, if you're, if you're hearing this and you're like, I don't, I, they said minis, they said extended shank, they said, they said bogey 513. I don't know what these mean. 513, say it right. Sorry, mm-hmm. no, 513, sorry, 513. You should say bogey six foot tall. Mm-hmm. Yeah, bogey six, bogey <laughs> six, six one. one. Um, there we go. But go to YouTube and type oh in, it's fine. type in hygiene it's edge. Early, it's yeah, early. it's early. Type in hygiene edge. I'm going to teach you how to count. Come on. But I can't teach you how to count. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. So go to Hygiene Edge. Go go to YouTube. Go to Hygiene Edge. Check out these videos, and you can see. Oh, this is what a mini is. This is what an extended shank is. I think as hygienists, we might be perfectionists. Maybe, Ooh, shocker. maybe. And we're afraid sometimes to go in with something that we don't know because we don't want to look stupid. Yeah, or have that learning curve. You know, right. our time is short. That right. learning curve is hard sometimes. But you kind of have to just. And that's where those sometimes. videos come in. And, and I got to tell you, you guys made a huge difference in when I, I started to say, you know, my big fear of taking this job at Young was instrumentation because I know I know my five. Like I know my guys. And then all of a sudden I have to know all the guys. And so sometimes I just sit and I'll just watch Hygiene Edge videos back to back to like learn. So you guys have really helped me come up to speed mm. to be able to feel more confident in my role as as a clinical education manager for, yeah. a, you know, a company that's that the has goal. Dental instruments. I mean, we want you to try all the instruments and figure out what yeah. you love and what works and what doesn't work and I had a student one time she had a favorite instrument she would use it all the time and I came over I could tell she was frustrated and I was like well why if that's not working let's try something new and she was like why didn't I ever think of that like this isn't working let's try something new so I think it's just a great like message to have in your head this isn't working let's switch it up yeah Yeah. and that's why there's so many amazing options on the market now yeah you find yourself in a pretzel go I'll bend you over trying to access an area say, maybe I need an instrument with a more complex shank. Hmm. Maybe I need the instrument to be doing this work and not my body. And not my body. <laughs> yes. All right. So number four is we've invested in these instruments, right? We know these instruments. Uh, we need to know how to take care of our instruments, mm-hmm. my friends. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's um, a huge part. Maintenance is a big part. Why buy all brand new? And you're going to yeah, break them or dull them or gonna bend them, them in right. a week. Yeah. And breaking an instrument is singularly the most stressful experience Oh my gosh! Yeah, in the uh, mouth. In the if mouth. you break in the mouth, oh yeah, it's uh, awful. Yeah. Singularly, yeah. yeah. I I've never had my heart rate. I call it a butt pucker moment. <laughs> That's exactly <laughs> what it was. <laughs> yeah, and like and so like you're trying to like grab the suction, and of course there's not a there's never a pair of cotton pliers mm-hmm. handy, and you're like, okay, so just keep your mouth open, nice and <laughs> nice and wide. Now I'm gonna please please don't hear that I'm terrified. You're gonna swallow this. And don't it's a chest as- X-ray. Don't <laughs> aspirate. Don't aspirate the instrument. Right, <laughs> uh, and the when it happened with me, I was using an old H six seven. When I mean old, I mean the diameter of the handle. It was really skinny, so I knew this had passed its expiration date. But it was the only thing on my tray. Right, and I know hygienists out there are like, "Well, this is the only thing on my tray," mm-hmm. and oh, I do that. It, so. Yeah, well, absolutely, <laughs> and recognizing that, yeah, that's the only thing on your tra- tray, which means that you're greater chance of something going wrong slipping breaking yada 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 and man but pucker for sure mm-hmm. yeah that's so a maintenance thing. is super important to keep it yeah great you know as long as you're, ha- so you're having really good care for your patients is maintaining your instruments in lots of different ways right lots of different ways certainly cassettes, cassettes. yeah having our instruments in cassettes it's a much safer way to take care of our instruments then they don't poke through bags you're not going to get hurt the, the metals stay separate, you know, because we should have different metals not touching. 
um, so that you know they don't they don't they're they aren't correct yes when they're processed yeah making sure your solutions are compatible to whatever instruments you're using oh yeah when you, right? all of a sudden all your instruments are rested and you're yeah. like what happened <laughs> like here? just because your well-meaning rep said oh this one's on sale try this one you probably should make sure that it's compatible with all of the things that you've invested lots of money in mm-hmm. yeah totally yeah look at your labels absolutely <laughs> look at your labels. read <laughs> the whole thing yeah and don't let your instruments soak for like five hours because that's not really good overnight for either. yeah yeah they definitely don't, like don't let them sit overnight that's gross uh, mm-hmm. like a, yeah, instruments don't enjoy that. The handles don't like that. We don't like it. We turn into prunes and right. sit too long. Exactly. <laughs> Think about that. And you're doing that to your poor little instrument. Mm-hmm. I know. Yeah. Unfortunately, like, I feel like we don't put a lot of thought into it, right? They're metal. They're kind of heavy duty. They seem like if you drop it, it might not bend. But really, they are pretty tiny. They're delicate. Yeah. yeah. If we don't handle them with care, they won't love us back. They'll break and twist and all the things. And then... When you open your cassette and one's totally a wrong angle, that's always super disheartening. And then now you're, well, now what do you use? It's broken. Right. So well, yeah. now you've just invented a new instrument. Right. <laughs> <laughs> really complex shank. That's going to get very complex. Now I've got someone to clean those thirds. It's very complex. It's very complex. Um, all right. And number five is just keep on a learning. Oh, that's a great life motto to have no matter what. But instrumentation <laughs> is huge for that. Because there's always, again, like we mentioned, there's always something new coming out, something better, a better way. I don't know. When if, if I ever hear, like, I learned this in school 30 years ago and I'm still doing it, it's like there's so many better ways now. Let's switch Absolutely. it up and, you know, let, let your body be happy with what's going on. Let's not keep doing the same thing. But I think it's funny. I feel like we do this in so many other aspects of hygiene, but we don't keep learning when it comes to instrumentation. Oh, this has been like crazy. What is that about? Like, yeah. this is what we do. And <laughs> that's pretty well, much we're like, I got amazing. it. I know yeah. it all. I'm done. I think there are a number of things. As we talked about earlier, sometimes people are like, this is something I should know. This is something I should be good at. Yeah. yeah. Should. This is my bread and butter. Yeah. yeah. We keep on shooting on ourselves when we need to be asking why do we feel that there isn't room for growth here and going to places where there is no judgment on where you are in your instrumentation that i mean for hygiene edge that's what we found is people were watching these because it was a very nobody knows that you watched 45 minutes of i can hide in my room (laughs) and watch instrumentation videos and be like okay now Okay. Oh, got it. Okay. The terminal shank should be parallel to the long axis of the tooth. That's how I know I'm and using the instrument correctly. <laughs> and that's what it looks I learned that like. From you guys. You know, and that's what it looks like. <laughs> I like that. I like that from you guys. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> or like in school, I'm like 78 degree. What what is 78 degrees? What does this look yeah. like? Seriously. And no, I mean, it very, not very often were you shown. Now this is 90 degrees. This is 70 to 80 with every instrument you you know you're in a school that you have a four to one or a five to one to your instructor to get that one-on-one is sometimes not as present well it's never as present as a video can be like you can watch that video whenever however and then we get in our same routines right it's Absolutely. especially with hygiene it's super methodical we jump in we do the same thing every hour yeah. so we just do it without thinking we get to a point where i can be like treating the patient and thinking about what we're doing that night, right? right? You don't have to think about it anymore, but it's nice to just visually see something, visually grab a new instrument and like kind of do a self check. Like, oh yeah, do I actually have the right angles? Do I actually mm-hmm. have a sharp instrument? Just doing that self assessment is really kind of eye opening. Like, I had a patient on Friday, he came back for a six week reeval. He was super tender and during the SRP and he was not healing as well. And I was like, that was totally me. Like, I didn't do that great of a job because of all the anxiety involved. And it was a really great self-reflection moment for me. Like, this is how I need to change. This is how I need to do things. So that's the one fun thing about hygiene. We can always learn and self-reflect with all our different patients because no one's the same. And you'll learn something new from every single appointment, which is really keeps it interesting. (laughs) And and, and that's it. I mean, and to understand that self-reflection isn't you were wrong. Self-reflection is now I get to grow. It's made to motivate and not to humiliate. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. None. I mean, I've been teaching Willie and and I combined over 20 years. Yeah. And I would still, if she came and did a calculus check after a patient, I'm sure she would find something. I'm sure that there is something that I can improve on every single time yeah. I sit down. And for me as a new grad, that felt really 
heavy Mm -hmm. that I'm am I ever going to be good at this (laughs) and when I threw that out the window that it's I'm not going to someday become this perfect hygienist it really gave me the opportunity to become better Mm -hmm. I wasn't stunted in that growth because I was expecting something that was unattainable right exactly I love it exactly I love it all right yeah you know what do they say about um it's better to replace an instrument than your shoulder or something like that. Oh, oh I like so, that. That is so. good. Oh. Much less expensive. Yeah. It's way you less expensive. It. Go ahead. Use okay. It. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, yeah, it's much new. less expensive. So. I'm going to use it today. This has been really good. I think it's been a long time since we've covered instrumentation on the podcast, and I think this is a, a different way of uh, attacking it, and I love your top fives. Hey, you know, You're well, like the, the queen of top fives. You know, so. I, I, I did love that podcast I had for a while called Your Dental Top Five, and you can still go back and listen to it, folks. still active on It's still active. <laughs> on forever. <laughs> forever. Forever. And it's a good one. And Let nobody's me tell going to see that you went and re- watched the top five 20 times to – grow (laughs) exactly it was her own that was yeah that's funny absolutely awesome thanks for being here everyone appreciate it thank you andrew happy under one roof yeah this is a tale a tale oh yeah a tale of two hygienists so there might be only one bringing the best of dental knowledge and we do it all with ease we cover oral health and screening and preventing gum disease we're gonna do a lot of learning and have a little bit of fun working at the dentist. A tale of two hygienists.